You think those two cops in the background are gay? Yeah. <laughs> you think they've explored each other's bodies? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that one especially, the one closest to us. Oh, yeah, he look, looks look, like a dom. Look at his, look at his smirk. Look at his like, look at his goofy eye. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I bet he keeps his hat on during sex. <laughs> I bet they use the handcuffs that they're assigned. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, welcome back to Ace Attorney, everyone. <laughs> oh, God, she's hot. Hey, that's what I'm saying. A lot of people in this case are, like, smoking hot. The investigation go... How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wright? Frankly, there are lots of, uh, gray areas. Or rather, the whole thing is one big gray area. Literally, like, the, the entire area is just gray. Yeah, because there's a parking lot. The parking lot's painted gray. <laughs> Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. I'm ready to accept my fate. I'm pretty sure in this game it's implied that whenever someone's found guilty, they get the death sentence, so she's a pet or just die. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in you, sis. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yes? A defense attorney should never believe their clients. Don't tell me what to do, bitch. Yeah, what does she know about defense attorneys? Yeah, you're She's a, prosec a prosecutor. Yeah, you're a prosecutor. That's like polar opposites. The, def the defendant is called to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Miss Guy, you... You remind me a lot of Mia. But there's one definitive difference between you and her. And that is... You're not a defense attorney. <laughs> I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. So if we save the game now, is he gonna save this trial? My first trial without Faye helping me. No one's going to bail me out this time. Oh. Yeah, I will! <laughs> That's not her voice. <laughs> no, I'm talking about, yeah, about like, Maya's in the Mike. background. She's just like... Yeah, she came in and is just sitting and watching for the peanut gallery. Yeah, she's like... I, I got sidetracked. I thought there was a waterfall here. <laughs> Man, I thought I'd stop by and see how Phoenix is doing. Man, they suck at this whole defense defense attorney shit. <laughs> I'll be alone in there. So I had to discover the truth all by myself. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. And by do- No, I'm not gonna say that. I'll be with you the whole way. She's younger than Maya. Yes, I realized that. <laughs> no, you did, but I didn't say anything. Yeah. You now I got a comment. That said, from Turkish, of, I don't appreciate the Victorian comments. And then the, the next little line that he said was, Yeah, Phoenix should shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, maybe Phoenix should stop talking. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. Oh my god, there he is. Sounds about right. <laughs> next... Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. When, when it pans out for the silhouettes again, look at Edgeworth. It looks like he is a fat ass. Also, why are we on opposite sides now? No, we've always been on this side. No wait, I swear, I swear, we've Edgeworth always been, was, no, 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 I swear, Edgeworth was on the left in the in the silhouette thing. Yeah, he's always been on that side. But aren't we on the left? I don't know. It's, it's I don't know. It's, it's weird. Don't think about it too much. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Edgeworth. Being an asshole right now. <laughs> it's been two months and I haven't been in the court since his trial. I hope that personal feelings will not be a part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. Oh, my romantic feelings? Sorry, I'll, go, I'll put those away. <laughs> I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. Your opening statement, please. Oh, yeah. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky has committed an unpardonable crime. Not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in a prosecutor's office lot. <gasps> no shit. Wow, he's much more forceful in person. That's hot. <laughs> I, I suddenly I, feel like confessing to everything, like my love for him. <laughs> oh, me too, me too, I'm up top. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yay! That was terrible. Ow. <laughs> However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. There was a witness to her crime. A professional witness. I knew it. Well then, call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. 
The prosecution calls its first witness, Miss Angel Starr, to the stand. The cough-up queen? I like how you said a professional in quotes, meaning, like, kind of like, oh, uh, she's a porn star. <laughs> hmm, haven't I seen you somewhere? You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Ho oh, ho, caviar. I've never eaten caviar before. The judge is really wolfing it down. Ah, and for you, I have a fiesta bowl. Um, thanks. Will the witness state her name and profession? Ah, uh, and yes, you, sir. Did you order the fingerprint lunchbox? It is too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, Edward never has good luck with the fucking witnesses. Yes, well, Your Honor, how does it taste? So this is why everyone raves about caviar. It's so tasty, it hurts! I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. What the heck does pi pickled tapioca taste like? It tastes like tapioca that's been pickled. <laughs> Name. <laughs> profession. Now. Man, can you talk like this to me? Kill. <laughs> <You're> so. <yourself. laughs> okay. Me? The name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running the lunch land these days. Is is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. The prosecution will wait. I'm not finished eating. Hurry it up! <laughs> Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. As you know, we usually <clears throat> call the police to provide a description of the crime. Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. Oh, uh, oh yes, I remember seeing you on Brazzers. <laughs> uh, what exactly does that mean? Oh, I was trying to remember the other one. It was, it was like family... Uh, <laughs> I was family trying to troubles or whatever? No, I haven't been on Pornhub in a while, so I'm like blanking on all the names. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> that site doesn't exist. Oh, I'm only interested in Cornhub. I was, oh yeah, Cornhub. How could I forget? It's where I look at corn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot to... I always go on there every April 1st. Because you know how, like, they, they change it to Cornhub? You know what's funny right now? We're talking about porn as we're, like, there's no music. <laughs> and yeah. we're finding out a revelation right now. We're just like, yeah, what are, what are, what are the porn titles? <laughs> No, I, I like it. I, I think it's so funny because they they have they have like midget corn and it's these little these little things of corn. <laughs> <laughs> like the little ones that people say with like the store fries. <laughs> it's, it's it's so funny. They have like ebony corn and it's just a black piece of corn. <laughs> it's all uh, it's stuff so funny. Uh, anyways, until two years ago, Miss Angel Star was a special investigator with the police. Ah, uh, that's for you. She was a first-rate homicide detective. What? What? Miss Miss Star was a detective. Man, I, I was far. No, she could have changed from investigator to porn star to lunch lady. Yeah, like like that's what Johnny Sins did. Really? Uh huh. I I know who you are. Cough up. Cough up, Queen Angel Star, Your Honor. Long time no see. Very well, you you may continue with the description, Miss Star. Just who is this lady? If I'm if I might have the court's attention over here. <laughs> the parking lot of the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. Block A is the prosecutor's office personnel. Uh. Block B is for visitors and clients. A chain divider separates the two blocks. I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutor spaces, yes? The crime took place by the car in the back of Block A and the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with this knife and went to dry the body out. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, Your Honor. Parking lot floor plans. I was a court. Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, Your Honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief prosecutor. Hmm. It seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Wright. Oh, why am I playing? <laughs> 
Oh, sorry. It seems that the poor, some poor loser is unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can, then can you crush me and so, I mean, I was about then to give ask. them your worst, Miss Star. I was literally about to ask, like, can she crush me like that? Wait, are they talking about me? <laughs> what are we even talking about? I need someone to adapt that song to a Phoenix Wright, uh, like, format. <laughs> Somehow, I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. When I sensed something, perhaps it was my fine-honed detective intuition at work. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor stand next to a garnished car. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Then she thrusted the pointy bit into the knife of Detective Goodman's chest. Hmm, bringing a lunchbox to your boyfriend. How touching. That's the only part of the story you focus on, really? <laughs> Let the record show that I also have a boyfriend. Yes, I'm canonically gay. Oh my god, yeah, it cuts him with the open mouth kissing of another guy. It's another judge, it looks exactly like him and everything. Just. <laughs> Now it's Von Karma. I knew it! <laughs> hmm, as you can see, there is no room for doubt. Yeah, that's actually the head canon. That's why Von Karma is able to do whatever he wants in the courtroom, because he's the he's the dominant one in the relationship, so he's like, the judge will like try and say something against Von Karma, and he's like, shut up! And the judge is like, oh my. <laughs> yeah, the judge is very submissive. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, there's no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be nothing other than the point of the knife which you saw being stabbed into Detective Goodman. So, how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? By what? You're, like, stepping on me? Or by the big-ass mountain? I was thinking... I was, I was still thinking about that. <laughs> it's like that one quote. It is with the flesh wound and he's missing his arm. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. All right, bitch. I'm asking you everything. All right. Don't oh, care. Don't care, care. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. <laughs> Quick, stop the one. How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic ab. What does that say? Abhorrence. Abhorrence of crime. Yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. Don't bow to that. <laughs> the lunch ladies, you know, uninformed opinion is that duly noted. <laughs> Given that they are used to erasing convenient evidence at their whim. Killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an exception of that. <laughs> Miss Starr, do you have some something personal against prosecutors? I feel that I found my dream job when I became an investigator. And if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off. She was fired. To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That said, I am a pro, as you know. My testimony is unbiased and flawless. By pro, that's short for prostitute. Very well, you may continue, Miss Star. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. Boyfriend? This boyfriend, he's a detective? Not that boyfriend. The security guard. The that boyfriend? You have several? Can I, I be only one have of them? one. <laughs> Can I be one of them? <laughs> yes, this boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Care to join? Oh my gosh, she is asking. The yeah, another boyfriend position is still open for applications. Uh, I, I'll stick with the lunches, thanks. See, he's gay. Uh, yeah. Note to self, the judge had to think before replying. <laughs> he was thinking about it. The security guard room is in in the lot in lot eight in a block. It's up to the second level that you can see everything from there. That would be the room with the security sign. Incidentally, did you bring your lunch boxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I park in B block. So she was in B block when she witnessed the crime. When I sense something, perhaps it's my family honed detective intuition at work. You sense something? So you're saying that you had a 
premonition of the murder? It felt like, how would I say? Oh, yes. It was like the feeling when you get when you view a pumpkin chalk of, uh, full of seeds. What? I have no idea what the fuck that means. <laughs> what are we talking about? Same with detective's intuition. Wasn't the victim Bryce Goodman also a detective? Bryce? Bruce. Oh, I said Bryce. <laughs> well, yes, he liked the young. He was like a young cheese. Uh, young cheese? Not molded? He was like big cheese from the back of the, the, back of the barnyard. <laughs> a pale white cheese, not yet telling you with experience in the streets. A greenhorn. Hmm, then I must be hard yellowed and sh I must be hard. Yellow. <laughs> yellowed and sharp as a tack. Yeah, with the odor of an old cheese to match, you smell like shit. In any case, there, in a lot, I felt something stir in the back of my mind. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garnished car. By garnished car, you mean... Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. Well, Mr. Edgeworth's? Incidentally, the knife in which the victim was stabbed with was also Mr. Edgeworth's. Wasn't it? Why do you have a knife in your car? Indeed, it was. He said it was in his toolkit. See, kit. doesn't he have a big fat ass? See, <laughs> see, Edward was on the left. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that, alright? We're, us we're usually on the left. Yeah. Hmm, what an odd case this is. And the person you saw, <laughs> you are sure it was the defendant? I saw her from no farther than 15 feet away. 13 feet away. 13 feet away. <laughs> That says 30. 30? Shit. <laughs> How did you get it wrong three times? I'm certain it was her. She's telling the truth. We're doomed. Let's just do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always nitpick. Witness, in your testimony, you clearly say the following. Prosecutors are nothing but worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness. You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future, Rookie. Huh? Rookie? Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me. I'll fry you into fritter, crisp on the outside, chewy on the inside. That... that was hot. I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You could cry a plagiarism? I may be relegated to a lower post of a lunch lady, but my instincts are honed. <gasps> she took a picture? Uh, a photograph. You took this? The moment I witnessed the crime, my reflexes took over and snap! I took a photo. In fact, one of my lunches is rigged with a camera. I suppose it's more exciting than just hanging it around your neck. <laughs> Witness, why am I only seeing this photograph just now? The box. Hey, you think I show it to you, a prosecutor? Think again. My boyfriend works in this photography division of criminal affairs. Well, this is most certainly def the defendant. The moment of the crime photographed by Angel Star. Oh, this is an unmist that is unmistakably Lana Sky. So, what was the defendant doing at the time? Chief Prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Objection! She's left handed! Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd say the blade was about four inches long. That's fucking huge. Yeah. Isn't that right, Mr. Edgeworth? It is your knife, after all. No, my knife is at least seven inches. Oh, that is pretty big. That's like double what this thing is. Uh, yeah, that's about right. Prosecutors are, by nature, well-versed in the locations of a man's vital orderies. I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg for my egg salad surprise set. You can't testify as your, at her ability to kill an egg. I mean, a person. <laughs> hmm? Perhaps a chicken salad set would have been a better metaphor. So the defendant was holding a knife. What then? She fucking stabbed him. Then, she thrust the pointy bit of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Tell the court why you didn't try to stop this crime. You did see her raise the knife to strike, no? Hmm, the defense has a point. 
Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Too late? Yes. The next moment, the chief prosecutor brought down the murder weapon. I... I see. It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Rain! We can make it! I feel like I lost both arms. <laughs> you said that before, anything else? Uh, scientifically speaking, we're fucked! <laughs> that was pretty fl fatal to me. But what do we do? Is this it? Is my sister guilty? Yes. Let's just keep our heads cool and press a witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panic next to me makes me calmer. Don't- don't smile like that! Wait, we just got new evidence. You wanna look at it real quick? The photo. Okay, so that is in a block. Yeah. I guess that looks like Mr. Edgeworth's car. Mm -hmm. The blood splatter is on the right side, so that yeah. matches. Okay. Kind of oh, she's like holding it like here. And she's got her hand like here. So this is like how she's facing. <laughs> So she's closing the car with her left hand. Yeah, I mean... But all the blood splatters on her... On her right. Oh, there's a, there's a giant fucking wall in the way of the security room in the... Well, she said she caught it through the... She was in B-block when she saw it happen. That's why when the photo, oh, you can see right, the chain right, fence. Right. It's interesting that there is a, a giant wall there. Yeah. I felt like they would have done that on purpose, but... I don't know. Well, it's just a chain link fence. No, I'm saying... D don't you see the wall that's oh, between the security room and the car? Yeah. That is kind of convenient. Yeah. Look at this floor! My heart boring draw strap. She already said this. You already said this. There's no need to push this again. Okay. Fair enough. Um. One knife wound. Died within an hour and a half. In the seas. Time of death. In chess. When was caused that by a 4.5 inch knife, a single stab was found. Okay, it's it's not like I don't see anything in here that's really. Uh, it's, it's really anything uh, that we can present on. So always news to come. That's something. Wait, was I actually right about the whole knife thing? How it- it's like the tip of it isn't covered in blood, and just the side of it? I mean, we could try that, but... Yeah. No prints, which makes sense because... Well, she- if she was the one that did it, she was wearing gloves. Yeah. Um... 512, that makes sense. Wait a minute. Wait, 512. Wait, look at the evidence again? When, when did Edgeworth arrive at the car? Like, when did he arrive at the parking lot? What, 512? Okay. And it was between 4 and 530. Okay. I'm being silly. Hang on. Like I said, I don't remember shit about this case, so me and you are gonna figure this out together. Alright, <laughs> <laughs> let dungeon. me just go through this and read it again. How did you know? That's in Twisted, Twisted Methods. I hate prosecutors. Blah, 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 blah. Blew it off, she was fired. I'm ready to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. Okay, that's definitely not. Yeah. Objection! You don't have a. Is that something off? 
from my own detective intuition at work. Uh, there's no way it's going to be that. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garnished car. Right, I, mean, yeah. I mean, they have photo evidence. <laughs> yeah, if I check this... Yeah, where she parks in B, you clearly see it. Yeah. Y you can see it, it's fine. I wish this said when it was taken. Yeah. Hey, wait a second. Can we look at profiles real quick? Uh, ah, uh, oh, shit. Can we not? Damn it. Because doesn't... I'm trying to remember the, the sprite. We literally just saw it two seconds ago. Isn't Lana's arm broken? Like she has a cast? Or am I crazy? Uh, well, that's true. Well, let me, let, let's just do a present of this one. Okay. Oh, shit! And you witnessed this? You saw Miss Sky stab the victim in the, with a knife? As I already said, yes! I swear on my finest salmon swirl lunch. Hmm, <laughs> I'm sure that that is a fine lunch. But, isn't it odd? Look at this photograph. In this photograph you took at the very moment of the crime, is it not? Then why is Miss Sky not holding a knife? You know, that, all, that also makes sense. Uh, Ahem. Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? Uh, 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 objection? <laughs> that had to be the weakest objection I've ever heard, Edgeworth. <laughs> Yet it was still stronger than your ever feeble mind, Mr. Wright. I'll show you a feeble mind. <laughs> what do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. Uh, and how could you tell that? Blood splatter. Huh? See the dark crimson stains on the chief prosecutor's coat? But this is a black and white photo. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes, it's hard to tell, but this could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. No problem, except you. Mr. Wright, are you going to just sit there and take that kind of abuse? Yeah, I am used to taking it. Yeah. Wait, that contradicts what the witness said in her testimony. Namely, that she took the photo the moment she witnessed a crime. Well, it seems I was slightly unclear. My apologies. Th that's it? If you run out of lunch, you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering a, a jumbo sized lunch on the get go. I hate this bitch. <laughs> good advice! I'm not sure I understand it, but good advice! I don't have time to stop her. The prosecutor's sky was cold, calculated, like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a premeditated murder. Objection. Premeditated? How do you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hands in that photograph. Well, are those gloves? Surgical gloves made of thin rubber, most likely. Why would she have those on? How can you tell? Um... If it was not premeditated, she would not be wearing those gloves. Ah. Uh. Look at that fat ass. These gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder is a serious offense? Witness, add this to your testimony. The murder was planned. The rubber grubs prove it. What if she just had a habit of wearing gloves? Like, driving gloves? The gloves were admitted as evidence when the defendant was arrested. Why don't we have this evidence? They were rubber gloves of the of the kind used for autopsies. In other words, when the chief prosecutor came to the crime scene, she came to do murder. It is the only possible conclusion one can make. Everything was planned. It was a premeditated murder. Ugh. Impressive. I'm sorry they took you off the force, Miss Starr. This is bad. She's got them thinking that it's all planned. 
If she can, if she can prove this claim, the trial's already over. I gotta think of a way to show that it wasn't premeditated. It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. This is my third time saying that. Yeah, you said that before. Anything else? Scientifically speaking, you get no bitches. Fuck! No, Edgeworth is right across from us. Don't embarrass me, Emma. I guess it's in the last statement. Yeah. It's the only new thing that we have. This one, right? Mirror's plan. The rubber grubs prove it. Okay, well, it doesn't make sense for it to be this same photo, right? Yeah. Like, um, parking lot plans. So, her statement is the murder was planned, the rubber gloves prove it, so we need something that contradicts it? Yeah. Wait, why is there finger. Why is there handprints on this? Oh, uh, uh, Gumshoe made it, remember? Yeah. He's not very handy. The motherfucker has assigned it with a with a battery, so it dances till it dies. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Let's make some deductive reasoning here. Okay. So. This is definitely not it. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, we check this out. This is Sergeant Bruce Goodman. Mm. It's back I guess we can't read it. Police department. It's just his ID. I'll name a number right in here. Sergeant Bruce Goodman, 584. Yep. Yep. Yabba dabba. Okay, so this this doesn't have anything to do with yeah. it. There's n there's nothing really here. Um, Something here proves it wasn't premeditated. Uh, well, they put it in Edward's car, right? Yeah. They would have had a bank on him being there. Yeah, and Edgeworth was there at five. Like three minutes after, like three minutes later, his car was used as a murder scene. <laughs> I want to know what. I don't think Goodman's note. Uh, Did you even check it? No? We, okay. Yeah, we can't do anything with that. Um... Okay, huh. wait, let me, let me reread this. I find it funny that that's the only piece of evidence that you have that you can't flip around. Yeah. Okay. Name of deceased. So... It's fine. Loss of blood from a chest wound. Wound was caused by a four and a half inch knife. A single stab wound was found. <laughs> Okay, so it's definitely not the blue badger panel. No. Um, I don't think it's this autopsy report because I don't see anything in it that would prove that it that it wasn't planned. Um, Goodman's note. I don't think this is it. Um, Wait a minute. Last call made to her sister. I don't think that was it. I'm feeling a little stupid. Well, it's maybe I'm thinking too much on this. Does the autopsy report rip up, like up? imply that he was stabbed at 4 p.m. And, and died from blood loss an hour and a half later. Okay, I was wondering that. I thought it just meant that this is the range from when he died. Like, it could have been from any time from 4 p.m. to 5.30. Try the autopsy report. I will try it just to, just yeah. to rule that out. Shit! <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, I... God damn it! It was a good try. I was like, that person's not premeditated or some shit like that. I don't know. Whoops. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> didn't, I didn't think that was it, but at least that that's one piece of evidence we don't have to. We can rule out there. Yeah. So not this, not this, not this. Could be, could be. Not this, not this, not this, not the, this. I mean, it was. Not this. The crime scene was Edward's car, and they used his knife, so it wasn't. If because it was from his toolbox, it said. And he keeps it in his car. I kind of want to try this, because... Cause if he, that does not work, try the knife. <laughs> yeah, these uh, we're going to have to go through some some permutations of this, because this one's a, a little bit not obvious. Yeah. But 
This is, this was my, when I looked at this, this was my first guess. Okay, let's see if, fuck no, the music's still playing. Nope. Okay. That's fine. Do we want to save here just in case we fuck up? <laughs> Murder was planned. <laughs> here, you can find out if it says that it's in the middle of a... No, it still says trial form, or the fuck? Alright. My second guess was the knife. Okay, it was the knife! knife. Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell box lunches for a living, you are know. They, are they trying to suggest that... Because it came from it, his car? Was it yes, if, if it was premeditated. It was a spring of the moment? Yeah, that, that's kind of what I was getting at with the with the ticket stub. Yeah. Was that, like, it's the scene and everything, and that this was found... But I guess this is right literally... Mind, right mindset, wrong evidence. Yeah, th this is literally, like, the best evidence for that case. Like, yeah. Because oh, if so you pull out the ticket stub and you're just like, like you can draw the conclusion there because you can say, oh well, this was the scene of the murder and this is where uh, his body was technically dumped and this is where uh, the, the knife was found. But you can literally just show the knife and be like, well, she stabbed him with. It's a weapon of opportunity. Yeah. Not necessarily one of premeditation. Yeah, because if it was premeditation, she would pull it out of her coat and kept it with her. Yeah. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. I remember. What's this case? The bloody murder weapon, a red car, all belonging to the prosecutor there? The defendant is the chief prosecutor of the district, right? Well, we are prosecutors, bad people. The defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you say that Lana Sky planned this murder. And that's why that she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing? A murder weapon. Oh. The knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. Uh, uh. She just dropped like 10 lunches. Yeah. She's like, my mental boxes! <laughs> that, that was a hundred dollar loss right there! <laughs> order, order, order. Crane, now the tides are turning in our favor. Great show, Mr. Wright. My sister's as good as free. Don't say that. <laughs> Right, uh, I have to tell you that the chief prosecutor told me to put that knife there. <laughs> <laughs> I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. But what? Can I eat your pie? I hope you aren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not over such a trifling detail. Uh, but this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. Well... Ah. The prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. Oh. Uh. The defendant, Lana Skye, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution need prove, nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose y you think you're clever now. But you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was planned. If it wasn't, why would she be wearing? I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. You thought. How dare you! My powers of deduction are not to be undermined. That's an under- Shut the fuck up! <laughs> How do you read everything wrong? Because <laughs> I'm dumb if you met me. <laughs> Lana Sky in intended to murder Detective Goodman. Objection! Oh wait, here you go. Oh yeah. It's in charge of initial investigation. Miss him. I love him. You're doing the thing that I do when we see Cabot on screen. <laughs> kind of sister. Yeah, wounded her right hand. Yeah, I, I thought I remember her having a cast. I guess she can't pull up the whole yeah, silhouette. She, she, I thought it was her left hand. Because I didn't realize, she, like, she's facing opposite she's towards yeah. us, so it's 
on so, her. It's on like it's ooh. to our left, but it's actually her right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she can't shake her hand. Cough up queen. Thinks he's a cowboy. Dead. <laughs> The victim and a good man detective in charge of homicide and critical affairs. Criminal. Fuck. That's why she called the victim all the way over to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure that the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge a knife in again and again. Oh. Oh, yep, yeah, that was a single stab wound. Yeah. Dead head. That, that's her, all right, that's there we a go. contradiction right there. <laughs> The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. Okay, if she intended to murder him, wouldn't she just murder him in her own office? Why do it in the yeah, public area? Yeah, she would literally call him up and... Yeah, and be like, oh yeah, can you, can you send uh, Mr. Goodman over? And they're like, right away, miss ma'am, and then just... Especially if she was going to plead guilty, because, like, you know, you could say, like, oh, if she was going to murder him, like, in her office, then, like, it would only point to her being the one that did it, but she's... She, like, said she was guilty anyways. Why mm -hmm. would she... Like, if she was the one that actually did it... Why would she be doing it in a parking lot and then pleading that she was guilty? Yeah. Doesn't really make much much sense. Yeah. Mm. The, oh, wait, I already read that. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the points that I wanted to make was the whole, like, right hand thing is they, they could say, like, oh, you know, she might have, uh, she might have, like, heard it. Uh, and then well, got it treated during, uh, sentencing? Not sentencing. Uh... Going through the system. Yeah. Yeah. They, they could have said something like that. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? Nuh uh. So if I order a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill a delivery boy? Uh, yes. In any case, the defense may now cross examine the witness. Emma, why are you next to us? I guess why Why was Maya next to us a lot? <laughs> she was not qualified. Well, this guy intended. You want to just go right to the statement? Or? I'm just going to press it just in case it's one of those things where I need to press every statement and then present. It, sh it shouldn't, this one. You said that, but you haven't told us how you know. What I know is... But that's what I'm about to tell you, rookie. I believe what she just said was a mere prelude to the story she's about to tell. Try not to interrupt her again. Blah, 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 rookie. Never interrupt the storyteller. It's like putting a, a bun out of the oven half-baked. Let me have baked here, all right, and it's you. <sighs> Try not to confuse the defense witness. They're not very quick on their feet. Now, why did you believe the suspect had intentions to murder the victim? Her actions speak for themselves. That's why she called the victim all the way down to the prosecutor's office. And we're like, nuh uh. <laughs> you have proof that Miss Sky called them there? You have proof that she didn't? Hmm, Mr. Edgerick, thoughts? There is no record of a call made on the defendant, Miss Lana Sky's phone. Well. You I read him a letter! <laughs> Come on, you could at least try public phone first, at least. In any case, the victim came to the prosecutor's office where he was murdered. I'm sure he had a reason to be there. Witness? Why do you think it was the suspect who summoned the victim that day? I'm sure that the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. What kind of grudge? Well, I wouldn't know that. Of course you wouldn't. That's because she didn't have a grudge. Rookie. I have a lunchbox here. Now, what's inside? Uh, it's a gun. <laughs> and here's a Glock. <laughs> it's like you open it and the bomb goes off because it's rigged. <laughs> it's like the light Yagami thing where if you pull the, the, the wooden panel off, it just explodes the desk. <laughs> well, it doesn't do that. It lights yeah, the book on fire. It also explodes. No, it lights the book on fire. I thought there was also an explosion. No, it, it's supposed to burn up the book. Oh. How am I supposed to know? <laughs> See? We agree that there's a lunchbox here, but we don't know what's inside. A person's life is like a lunchbox with pretzels. Don't you agree? Uh, I, I get it. That's why my lunch was so salty. This judge isn't very good at metaphors. The suspect had a grudge against Detective Goodman. Will you tell us your basis for thinking this? It's simple. Nothing could drive that human machine to plunge that knife in over and over and over and over. And then you pull out the, the t yeah, and then you go like, she always stabbed him once! <laughs> you said that she stabbed him again and again, but you couldn't have witnessed that. 
Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. With some ma surprise! Whoa, Zoro made an appearance in, in Phoenix Ray's attorney? That's crazy. I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. Uh. Uh, what do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. Wait. The autopsy report states that death was due to a, a loss of blood from one stab wound. Oh, uh, ah, you're right. Good show, Mr. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What a hunk! He's my hero, really! What about my objection? No one, you, no one noticed? Well, witness. You got the crime scene set, right? Oh, uh, oh, thanks. I'm always, I've always believed that no one would ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she looked at her knife, I thought I saw blood on her breast. Scattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she would stab him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify. Man, for for a former detective, the red muffler looks like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. The red muffler? Wait, how how does that make sense? Is Wait, it... pull up the photo. What red muffler? What the photo of? Of her standing clothes in the thing. She's not wearing it. That little hang- like, pull up her pro- oh, you, I don't think you can pull up her profile. Unless you want to, like, press her on this and then pull it up, but she wears, like, a- like, a red little, like, scarf thing. Yeah, that's a muffler? I think it's called a muffler. I thought- okay, I guess it's about to explain. Are you- here, press the court record and see if you can pull up the profile. She-, she I mean, oh. she was wearing- oh. <laughs> it's our attorney's badge! <gasps> You're telling us we could have done that yeah, the whole it's time? Yeah, it's this thing, yeah. Yeah. So when- when she said muffler- <laughs> I was thinking the muffler, as in of like with the car muffler. Yes, <laughs> I was like, I was like, I don't think the, the the car has a muffler, but number two, aren't mufflers in the back? Yeah, and, and she wouldn't be able silver. to see it from yeah. from. Well, it's a good thing. It's a good thing we pressed on this because I was about to say, aha, uh -huh, you wouldn't be able to see that shit. <laughs> you would present the photo, and you're like, huh, you can't even see the muffler, and Phoenix would be like, yeah, she's not wearing her red scarf, and you're like, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? What does that mean? The chief prosecutor always wears ones around her neck. So she can easily hang at the moment's notice, I suppose. That's so fucked up. Miss Sky is wearing a red scarf, wasn't she? Man, that'd be really fucked up if you were colorblind. Is it odd to you that you s mistook that for a splattered blood? Well, people often mistake my beard for a bib. And just for the bim. That's why this place feels so much like a kind garden sometimes. <laughs> Actually, I do think I saw some traces of blood on her chest. However, the autopsy report is clear on this matter. There was only one knife wound. Apparently, Miss Starr isn't exactly sure of her own testimony. Mr. Ray, this is our chance! Yeah, I got it! For our chance for what, I wonder? Miss Star has turned out to be a less tempered as she looks when we met her. Challenging her abilities as a detective really set her off. The short wick burns out the fastest. It's a scientific fact. I wonder, wouldn't it depend on the size of the candle? I mean, add more wax and even a really short wick can burn longer. Obviously, more scientific testing is required. Alright, go to the last statement. <laughs> Red muffler. <laughs> You can't see the muffler in this photo! <laughs> Miss Star, I demand an explanation. Oh. The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. What? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. And you've proved it yourself with this photograph. Yeah, why is. <laughs> is this we're doing our job for us? Oh, but then they may be. Only a professional lunch lady could be so utterly clueless. Congratulations. Perhaps you finally found your true calling in life. Hmm, harsh words, but good. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my objection? Chopped liver? Uh, but it was there, a scarf. No, that's not... But something red, really. Well now, where were we? 
The witness has given us an entertaining interlude, but back to business. What? Very well, witness. Continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, I can't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? The part where your sister stabs the victim. The next testimony might just be the moment of truth. Apprehending the su how are you gonna apprehend her if there's a fucking chain fence in the way? <laughs> After murder, after the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind the parchment off to the side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. That doesn't make sense because she was in. Wait, she got fired, right? And she's not an active police member anymore. Yeah, she wouldn't be in the B block. I mean, there's um, oh yeah, that too. Isn't there like citizens arrest? Well, yes, but uh. I think the most important point is she, how the fuck was she in the A block? She she morphed through it. Like, you know that one dude from My Hero Academia that can go through walls? <laughs> She's yeah. like that. Yeah, and all of her clothes go I mean, what? And that's what confused me from my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made the escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. You are quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. It wasn't a very good metaphor, first of all. A cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. No thanks. Something kinky. Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. I think everyone is. <laughs> the chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, knocking over an oil drum. An oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Rawr. Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, if you will. Guy, I want her to step on me. <laughs> oh, pfft. So, where was this parchment on the floor plans? Yeah. I'm sure she means this wall right next to the car. That's right. There's a wall there, about six feet high. She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite the natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Hang on, I want to take a look at this. Yeah, so she took this picture from behind the fence. Yeah. So... Okay, so my, my first thought about it is... How would she have been in... in... Block yep. A? Mm-hmm. But is that... Yeah, there's a fence in the way. Is that gonna be because of this? Or is that going to be because of this? I think it's more obvious with the plans, right? I think the photo proves like, hey, you were on the other side of the fence when it was taken, because you could have seen the photo. Yeah. You were quickly? You were close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Thirteen. Fifth. Fifth. Third, fuck. <laughs> Project room. I like to see this war plan just to be safe. The lunch lady car was... She was a visitor, thus she was part of B-Block. So you witnessed the murder from here? That would make it about 30 feet from the car, yes. Is that correct, Miss Star? Yes, that's right. But there's a... oh. But there was a chain link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Uh, amazing, the Kavo Queen lunch lady athlete indeed. It would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence. So she couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence is about nine feet high. So how did Miss Sky not get away? Oh yes, when I arrested her, I mentioned the muffler. Oh, she mentioned the muffler. She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I remember exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard from her was the word muffler. Just that one word? So what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else? Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? She can't mean... 
By phone, do you mean this cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately? My memory is like a salmon heading upstream, you see. No, the court doesn't seem to start. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently it was out of order. And so she used her cell phone? Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm, good witnessing witness. Good witnessing? What ever happened to good testifying? You should of course add this to your testimony. The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. The word muffler was overheard during a call made to Emma at 518. I saw it all, how she tried the phone on the wall, but had to use her cell instead. Um, do you think you could restate your testimony for the court? Oh, I was going to ask the same thing. I only said this one more time, so listen close, you rookies. The chief prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the portion. Then she picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. So she pulled out her own cell phone out of her pocket. <laughs> and during that time... And oh. during that time, you climbed over the chain link fence. Then I boldly grabbed her arm. Is that how it broke? The chief prosecutor hung up her phone. And you saw her doing this? What is it, Mr. Wright? The chief prosecutor made to escape, but again... Escape resistance was futile. She made to escape? Can you be more specific? She pressed aside my hand and ran. It was a terrible sight to see, like a loft of... A dollop of a lard dollop on of... a pate of foie gras. Thank you, Cameron. <laughs> Do you understand what any of that means? I know what lard is, isn't it? Like fat? Yeah. On um, some duck liver? Yeah. Okay. Huh? <laughs> she even kicked over an oil drum at me. An oil drum? There was an oil drum lying on the side of the scene of the crime. But it's strange. Hmm, what's that? If she wanted to escape, why didn't she run the other way? The other... Ah! Yeah, why didn't she run to the fucking exit? The parking lot entrance. Th that's right! It doesn't make any sense that she would run from behind the partition to the oil drums. Excellent! More mysteries! I wish I could solve a few before finding more, though. So, Miss Guy trying to run? I'm sorry my sister is so suspicious, Mr. Wright. Not as sorry as I am. But she didn't do it! You have to believe me! After the murder, the suspects attempted to run the Porsche to the... Oh, gosh. I don't know what to... <sighs> Wait, go back? Oh, okay. I didn't murder the suspect, tried to. Okay. Tempted to run behind the side. So, if we look at. The block lands? So, she ran off to the partition on the side. I do want to ask if she was behind the wall, how did she see her use the phone? I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Very detective like. Yeah. And yes, I arrested her, she messed in the muffler. Okay. Yeah. I saw it all how she tried the phone on the wall and had to use her cell phone instead. I do want to say this on this. Does this like make sense? Cause like, like you said, how how did she see her shoes? Yeah, cause if she came around the wall, she would have said it on her cell phone, like she testified, and 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 then like she grabbed her arm, restrained her, and I'll, then the phone was on. I'll up. try it. Yep. I was right. <laughs> Miss Sorry, I have to conclude that you are a very personal grudge against Miss Lana Sky. Oh, you can check. The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Yeah, bullshit. Well, who ever thought that you'd be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You who, together with 
The chief of prosecutor kicked me out two years ago. 